Welcome to a special edition with GE Workers United. I'm Tanya Hutchins, your host of Activate, and this is a special edition in downtown Cincinnati. We have our coordinated bargaining committee here meeting with General Electric for contract negotiations. And we're going to talk with some of the lead negotiators to tell us a little bit about how there is power and strength in unity and, and also just about the process and the support that we've all been receiving. We're going to start with the president of the Communications Workers of America, Chris Shelton. Thanks for being here, Chris. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about CWA's role and the support that you're bringing to the table. Well, uh, I noticed from the graphic that this is called GE Workers United. Well, in CWA, it's much more than just GE Workers United. It's all 700,000 members of the Communications Workers of America, who are now GE employees, just like our IUE, CWA brothers and sisters, and all the other unions that work for GE. We, will, we are committed, our whole union is committed to make sure that the, uh, uh, all the folks at GE get the contract that they deserve, the contract that they, that, that they should have been getting the last 15 years. You know, GE is a company that uh, once was a, an American icon, well, it should be again, but the only way it's going to get there is if it takes care of the people who made it that way, and that's the people who are represented by the unions at the table. Uh, you know, when you, when you decide to pay millions and millions of dollars to CEOs who last an hour and a half uh, and not pay the people who actually make things that make this company work, uh, it's a crime, and, and this company has to understand that we are not going to put up with it anymore, that our members at GE are going to revolt if they don't get a contract that they deserve. So CE, CWA is going to support uh, our members at GE 1,000%, and whatever we need to do, we will do. What do you think we have to do to make sure that the companies realize and remember that the workers are the company? Well, I tried in my opening this morning at the negotiations, and we will keep trying, and sooner or later they're going to realize that, or else they're going to have a disastrous situation here that I hope that they understand, because uh, our members, uh, and I'm sure the other unions' members, are committed to make sure that they fix the things that have been uh, bad for our members and for everybody else's members over the last 15 years with this company. You know, they're going to cry poor mouth, and, but they're certainly not poor. I saw uh, uh, a company bargaining team this morning of, I don't know, 40 people. You don't send 40 people to bargaining when you're poor. Um, so this company has to realize that it's their workers that made this company and it's their workers that can destroy this company if that's what they want. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. That was Chris Shelton, president of the Communications Workers of America. Now, if you're just joining us, we're in downtown Cincinnati, and there are negotiations going on with General Electric. There is a website that you can go to called geworkersunited.org, and there's more information there, um, updates there. This is where you can get all of your information. It's Information Headquarters for GE Workers United. Joining us now is Carl Kennebrew with IUE CWA. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about how important was it to your vision to make sure that every union had a seat at the table? Well, I think it was critical. We needed a voice, and everybody should have a voice. I mean, this is what unions were founded on, was being unified and having one voice. And so it was very important for each and every person to represent each and every member of GE's organization. You know, uh, our jobs as leaders are we're only as strong as our members, and so every member should feel like they have input into what is decided as far as their future is concerned. What is your role here? My role is just to lead, uh, to make sure that we're doing the right things, that GE sees us united, to keep us united, and to keep us in the right direction. When I see all of the unions that are involved, just the teamwork and the unity speaks volumes. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's, it makes me feel uh, proud. You know, uh, I grew up in a labor household, and so, you know, I know what we're capable of. And I hope that, you know, we take opportunities like this to come together to show these companies because, you know, if we're divided, then we've already lost. And so it makes me feel confident in our victory and success 
that when we take on this fight, we take this fight together. You know, a saying I always have is that whenever I feel like when I was young and I would get in a fight, if I was outnumbered, I would go get my brothers and sisters. And so that's what I've done. I've went and got all of my brothers and sisters to fight this fight with me. You know, when you say you grew up in a union household, and I see all of you here at negotiations, it makes me think that you're fighting for those future generations so they can grow up in union households. Absolutely. This fight is not just about now. This is about the future of just not just GE, but sending a message to all of these corporations to let them know that we're tired and we're done and we're ready to fight. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I just want to thank all of the unions that are here and for our members to know that we expect them to stand, stand together the same way that we're standing together here in Cincinnati. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Carl Kennebrew, IUECWA. We are in downtown Cincinnati. You can always get more information at geworkersunited.org. There's the website right there. Joining us now is IAM General Vice President Brian Bryan. Thanks for being here, Brian. Thank you, Tanya. So what was your vision on preparations going into negotiations? Because I know that there was a class that took place at the Wimpensinger Center um, Education and Technology Center in Hollywood, Maryland. Well, when we learned um, how we were going to approach this negotiations compared to previous um, uh, coordinated bargaining sessions, I recognized that you know we want to make sure that we were sending our local lodges to the bargaining table with the best tools available to them, the best training. Uh, and that's why we took the initiative to uh, send all of the groups uh, for a one-week training through the Wimping Center Center uh, for both a strategic approach to the negotiations, but also training, uh, because many of them, it was their first negotiations. But we wanted to make sure that we had a, a solid group, a, a group that was going to approach us in solidarity. And is that the course that we call negotiation preparation? It is okay. the negotiation prep. How was the research involved? Um, did our strategic resources department help? Well, and the other thing that we've done is, uh, from the Machinist Union um, is we wanted to open up all of our resources available to all of the unions in this uh, negotiations. And, and one of them was our strategic resources department. Um, you know, they've, we've got some of the finest people in the industry um, that can research a contract, cost out a contract. Uh, they can cost out our proposals. They can cost out the employer's proposals. And we wanted to, we, we really felt that uh, we could help a lot at the table by uh, bringing those resources uh, to the negotiations. And I know this is part of the communications, but I see we have a great website there, the geworkersunited.org. We do. We do, Tanya. And, and the other piece that was critical is we wanted to make sure our members were, uh, knew what was going on, uh, both leading up to the negotiations, and not only that, but also while we're in negotiations and then after negotiations. You know, the one thing that can really help uh, any union at the bargaining table is, is an informed uh, membership. And that's why we, again, opened up our resources from our communications department to assist in any way possible to bring the best contract home that we can for uh, not only the machinist union members, but all the other unions also. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, just to let everybody from, uh, that works at GE that's involved in these negotiations let them know that uh, the 650,000 retired and active uh, machinist union members stand behind them 100% in helping them secure a good contract for our members at GE. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate it. And the website that we were mentioning was geworkersunited.org. That is information headquarters where you can get updates and everything that you need to know, geworkersunited.org. We have Jerry Carney with us now from IUE, CWA. Um, and Jerry, you have quite a few issues you're concerned about. Tell us about a couple of them that are big issues for you here at the table. It's raises, that real, ways, real, real raises and not ACP payments like we've seen in the 2015 contract with only a 60 cent raise and our colas were fixed and a lot of ACP payments that does not go on to your checks, you know, to not continue adding on. To what you make our health care is a huge issue you know with the cost and as you heard in the opening statements a company is going to continue trying to pass those uh, costs along to the employees and put them on our backs again but the real issue is job security it doesn't matter if I get a ten dollar an hour raise for everybody and the greatest health care in the world if we don't have job security real job security and real language to protect our jobs 
five years from now, I'll be reading their names like I read today, 23 locals that, have, that closed down from the 2015 contract to the 2019 contract. 23 locals. 23 locals. And when you think about that, that that's just not 23 locals. That's 23 locals that had families, and it's family members that are affected all over the place by either the plant closing or by the sale of a business to where the families no longer have a pension or they've lost something along the sale. What does that do to a family, to a worker, when they know the plant is going to close? It destroys them. I've been going to Salem, Virginia. Salem is our next plant that will be closing right after this contract, as a matter of fact, in July. And when you sit there and you look at the, the people and you know that sometimes when you walk through there, you've worked with their, mother, with their mothers or their fathers at uh, executive council meetings or at contract languages, and there their children are. They're not going to have a job to go to, not a general electric job. There's other jobs up there in the Salem area, but they're not GE jobs. They're not jobs that are good union jobs that pay what GE does. Livable wages. Correct. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to add, Jerry? No, just that job security is going to be our number one focus on this contract. I mean, we've got language in there that looks like that you have job security, but we're going to make sure that that language is firmed up so five years from now we're not reading off another list of locals that have been closed down. Well, thank you so much for putting a real face on this um, and for mentioning those locals, you know, that have closed so that we don't forget anybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Jerry Carney, IUECWA, telling us about the issues that were important, um, including health care, plant closings. He said there were 23 plant closings, um, and that affects people's jobs, livelihoods. Um, joining us now is IM Collective Bargaining Director Craig Norman. And Craig is here to tell us a little bit about how each union has a different process. Craig, what is the IAM's process? Well, thank you, Tanya. Uh, the IAM and the master agreement, what we do is the uh, master agreement covers usually the economics, the wages and the benefits. Um, and then the locals cover how they handle their local language, seniority rights, bumping rights, layoffs, hiring, and how those processes work. So prior to um, coming here to Cincinnati, our locals sit down with their members and their local leadership from GE, and they talk through how language changes that affect their locals would make it better for them going through in the future. So did that take place in May? Th those local language talks take place from April through um, May. So it depends on the local, and mm -hmm. they'll sit down for a week and or the time frame that it takes. and get their local language issues resolved and, and bring that package here to master agreement negotiations. And depending on how things go here, we could have a package and they have something to take back to their locals to vote. And then their locals have had an opportunity to address union issues, union management issues at their local, at the local level. And then also when we have a finalized package here out of the master agreement, they'll see what wages and benefits look like as well. Okay, so we have the local committees and then we also have the national committees. Yeah, so there's, it's somewhat, there's a number of layers to this process, but uh, it's all in an effort to get the members a voice at the table throughout the whole process. Okay, and I think that's important, isn't it? It's very important. It's members, is, we, that's why we're here, is for the members. We are the voice of the members. Okay, so we are keeping this <coughs> member-centric, remembering why we're here, um, which we do every day. Right. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, just Craig? thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, thank you so thank much, Craig. Craig Norman is the IAM Collective Bargaining Director um, here. Next up, <coughs> we are going to have Gary Jordan, UAW International Representative. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. Um, I know jobs are a huge issue with you, as it is with everyone here in the room. Tell us a little bit about how you feel about the sourcing of work. Uh, the sourcing of work. Um, when I hired in General Electric in 79, GE was a national conglomerate. Today they're a multinational conglomerate. It was established last contract four years ago that there's 5,000 more employees outside the United States than there is inside the United States. So when we start talking about jobs and the commitment that GE is going to put work at our sites, there was more commitment to offshore or, or to go outside of our shops in the CB and support us. You know, that just amazes me that you know we're talking about people we're talking about jobs and we're talking about livelihoods and 
we have a company here based in the United States. You know, do you think a lot of companies just forget that, you know, this is where it all began, we're supporting our own workers? Or do you think it's just about the money? I, uh, I think it's about the money. There's, as I view it, and it's my opinion, that there's a lack of commitment to support those that earned the revenue that built the company of General Electric. You know, I've been around for a while and I've met a lot of people, a lot of great leaders in CBC, and, and uh, full of compassion to support their sites and, and to create innovation to pit work at their sites. So, you know, as the company would move off, you know, to profit, obviously, we watched individuals leave the CBC and downsize. You know, when I hired in, the CBC was probably 180,000 strong. Uh, today, you know, we're over 6,000 people in, in the CBC, and it doesn't show a commitment to bargain with us what's important and work in our sites. When the company talks about no action in 50 years as far as a strike, I don't equate that to success. What I equate to success is that we bargain, they put work in our sites, and that they supported us. And more importantly, not only do they support the active workers, but the retirees, and, and that they bargain with us with job and income security and make it meaningful and put work in our sites and build that next generation that's going to build them the revenue that they need. So what is your message to the company when it comes to jobs? To bargain fair, to support the CBC, to get innovative, to be creative, and understand that the real message here needs to be jobs. All right, thank you so much. Thank Unless you there's so much. anything you'd like to add. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Gary. You can go to the website. We call it like information headquarters. It's geworkersunited.org. There you have it, geworkersunited.org. We have Randy Middleton with us from IBEW. Thanks for being here, Randy. Thank you, Tanya. So tell us a little bit about what the size of your unit is. Well, to put it in perspective, you look back in the mid-70s, IBW Manufacturing Department, which I'm the director of, we had 360,000 members across the United States and Canada. Today, we're down to a little over 42,000. And you put that in perspective of GE, back in the day, we had over 4,100 members that were employed by General Electric. Today, we have 112 members. And so you can see, as a CBC union, we're basically disappearing through plant closures and the sell-off and spin-off of GE properties. And it's disappointing because this is a global company. And right. as we, we've mentioned before, remind us how much of this work is outside of the United States. It, and that's, they move everything out. Uh, they, they're, they're chasing the, the cheaper wage, the cheaper labor. And it, it's so ironic because not only GE, but other corporations that I negotiate with and that all the unions in this room negotiate with, their battle cry, they come to the table and they act all confused on how to attract and retain skilled workers. Yet, they repeatedly close their facilities in the United States. It's frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. How do you deal with that frustration? All we can do is roll up our sleeves and go back at it and try again. And, and that's what it's all about. I mean, we're here um, trying to get the best contract we can um, and to echo statements that have been said all, all morning here is our goal is to be back here three or four years from now to negotiate another contract. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you for taking time out to speak with us, Randy. Randy is with IBEW. He's the Manufacturing Director. And if you'd like more information, just go to the website, geworkersunited.org. That's geworkersunited.org. If you're just joining us, we've been talking with the lead negotiators here um, in downtown Cincinnati, negotiating with General Electric. We have Alex Lineski here from IFPTE, and you are the local 147 president? Correct. All right. Tell us how important is it that we maintain unity and solidarity with all these unions throughout the process? Oh, it's key. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a key goal to accomplishing anything great. I mean, unity is a, a very important part of anything. If you try to accomplish something, unity is the key. And I see all the locals coming together, all the national unions coming together, and I just see a, a great amount of energy, and energy is a way that you get things done and accomplished. What does it take to get a good contract? Commitment, sacrifice, a group of committed people who want to work for a united goal, um, 
and um, a lot of a lot of energy and sacrifice. I guess that's sort of the key to it. And how important is it that the people on the other side of the table are open and willing to work with us? Well, it's, it affects them too. Yeah. If there's no contract on this, on we don't come to an agreement, there is no future for GE. It's it's we're at that point in our lives that GE has to wake up. If we're gone, they're gone. They only have a board of directors manipulating parts out in the other parts of the world, not here. It's key. It's very important to keep this country, this great country, united together to do accomplish something great. I was mentioned today, D-Day, and, I, and I, I'm a kind of a World War II nut, and I, I think about it. That was a great show of unity. How many groups and divisions and countries all committed together to make one common goal? We kind of get away from that a little bit. This is a great example of how, why you need unity to accomplish something great. Well, speaking of unity, we have GE workers out there that will be watching this. What is your message to your fellow workers about you being here with this team fighting for a new contract? Uh, thank you and have for faith in me to, to uh, make good decisions. Stay united, stick together. The unions, we're gonna get this done. This is important for everybody. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think I'm good. Thank you so much, Alex. Alex Lineski, IFPTE local 147 president. So we have been talking with the lead negotiators here in downtown Cincinnati during General Electric negotiations. For more information, you can go to the website. It's geworkersunited.org. It is geworkersunited.org. Thank you so much for joining us.